There were over 30 NES games that were also released on the Atari 2600. And in this video, we're gonna look at all of them. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. A lot of love for the NES, a lot of love for the 2600. Let's check it out. Well, to get right to it, gotta start off with Pac-Man, which did come out for the NES. Couple of versions. This is the Namco version. There was also a Tengen version. I think the Namco one uh, plays pretty well, though. Looks pretty arcade accurate. It's not 100% one-to-one ratio with the arcade, but it's good. Compared to the travesty that we got for the Atari 2600, Oh dear lord, I'm old enough to remember when my dad went to the store to get our first Atari 2600, it had to have been 1982 or so, and I remember thinking to myself, I can play Pac-Man at home, don't need quarters or anything, and then this is what we got. I actually still enjoyed this game, I mean it was still pretty much Pac-Man, just not exactly what I had in mind. According to the gaming historian, this was just the prototype what was going to be Pac-Man for the Atari 2600, but they went ahead and printed the prototype. You can check out his video for more information on that. Hard to have Pac-Man without Miss Pac-Man, the superior version of Pac-Man to most people's eyes, including my own. And this is the NES version. Yeah, it's Miss Pac-Man, all right. Differences compared to Pac-Man is the fruit bounces around instead of being static in the middle of the screen. The ghosts may or may not have different behaviors. I never figured out the behaviors of the different ghosts or monsters, according to the old school Pac-Man archives. The Atari 2600 version of Miss Pac-Man actually plays really well. This is a this is a very decent port, especially for its time. Uh, I have no problems uh, with this game. I mean, it's not, again, arcade accurate, but it's a lot mm, closer to the arcade version than what we saw for Pac-Man for the 2600. Kind of funny to think that back in the day, Nintendo was making games for Atari, and of course there was Donkey Kong. Now, this is Donkey Kong for the NES. Again, not arcade accurate, but it was close enough that we just kind of said, like, yeah, that's good enough, but we'll allow it. So you got Mario jumping over the barrels, trying to rescue Pauline from Donkey Kong. The arcade version had four levels, this one had three, and that was okay. And then you have the Atari 2600 version of Donkey Kong, where you have the gingerbread man throwing a honeycomb at you. And I played a lot of this when I was growing up. I mean, it was still Donkey Kong enough that it got the job done. The arcade version had four levels, the NES version had three levels, this one had two levels. This level here with the pegs, uh, those fire things never move up the ladders, you just kind of roam left and right. But still, I mean, not bad. What about another classic, Donkey Kong Jr., the game where Mario plays the bad guy. You're Donkey Kong Jr. trying to rescue your dad, Donkey Kong. Should be able to vines and avoid the bad guys, of course. The Atari 2600 version of Donkey Kong Jr., though, well, I mean, it looked like this. I mean, if you use your imagination, I guess, <laughs> it gets the job done. But you know. And then this one only had the two stages, including the one with the keys. And I guess according to lore, yeah, Donkey Kong Jr. for the Atari 2600, who would have thunk it? Continuing the trend, we have Mario Brothers. This is before Super Mario Brothers. You have Mario in his plumbing roots, knocking over the bad guys, gotta kick him off the edge of the screen. Fun game this one. Two player, two player funness on this with Mario Brothers. And the Atari 2600 version of Mario Brothers isn't actually all that bad. It actually plays pretty well, all things considered. You know, coins aside, whatever those flashing cubes are, um, I mean, it gets the point across. You, you, know, you know what's going on, you can tell what's going on, especially if you're a fan of the series like I was. Uh, yeah, nothing to do. Yeah, nothing to worry about. Even had the bonus stages with actual coin-shaped coins. Why couldn't we get those for the items that were coming out? Well, I don't know. Don't worry about it. Another one of my all-time favorites, Popeye. This is the NES version here. You gotta catch the hearts from olive oil. Uh, like music notes in different stages or whatever the whatever she's tossing out, you gotta pick them up. Avoid Bluto. You do have your can of spinach that will give you, that you can use once per round that will uh, get them off the screen and, you know, kind of get you the upper hand here. But yeah, I'm a huge fan of Popeye. And the Atari 2600 version of Popeye, again, it gets the job done. Doesn't look bad. I played a lot of this when I was growing up too. In fact, the Atari 2600 version, unlike the NES version, has the bottles being thrown out of the side. Now in the arcade, it's the Sea Hag who's tossing bottles at you uh, every once in a while from behind the steps, which she doesn't do in the Nintendo version. Uh, you don't see the Sea Hag, but you know they're tossing out all the same, and you can punch them out of the way. This one has two stages. All right, I'm gonna slightly cheat on this one because this is Dig Dug, and this is the Famicom version. It did not come out in America for the NES, but it did come out for the Famicom, and it plays like Dig Dug. I'm a huge fan of Dig Dug. Old school arcade game. You gotta dig, and then you use your pump to uh, inflate these enemies until they explode. And the Atari 2600 version, like the other ones, it gets the job done. You can kind of tell what's going on. Instead of rocks, you have these little cube square things, but you know, you, you know what they're supposed to be. You can tell who the enemies are supposed to be just by looking at them. Yeah, it's not bad. Now, HAL America made a series for the NES 
that were available on both the NES and of course uh, ported over from uh, the arcade version which also had Atari ports. This is Defender 2. You're defending the planet from the aliens trying to capture the citizens, I suppose. Fast moving action, huge lasers, kind of a classic space shooter, that horizontal action. And the Atari version, very similar. Very similar, actually. All right, Defender 2. Another all-time favorite in Joust. Now, if you're not familiar with Joust, but you are familiar with the NES and Balloon Fight, well, odd to say that this plays like Balloon Fight, because I'm so used to saying Balloon Fight plays like Joust. You gotta pop the enemies, grab their eggs. If you don't, then, um, you know, another rider will pop out and, uh, you know, hop on another ostrich. I guess they're ostriches? Super fun game. Well, I'm a huge fan of Joust. And I played a lot of it for the Atari 2600 as well. Easy Atari version. Like I said, it gets the job done. You can tell what's going on. No Centipede, but we have Millipede, which is kind of the sequel, I suppose. And it plays basically the same. This one has DDT, though, which is like little bombs, basically, to uh, destroy more parts of your Centipede or Millipede in this case. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this game. Uh, it would be better with a trackball, but, you know, with, with the joystick or with the controller, it works just fine. And then with your joystick on the Atari 2600, Ah, it plays just fine too. Instead of DDT, you just have DT. That's how it'll fit. But you know what it's supposed to be. Millipede for the 2600. Because sure. Another all-time favorite in burger time. You're Peter Pepper, making the most giantest burgers you've ever seen in your life. Which are pretty basic on this first level. It's a uh, bun, meat, lettuce, and then another bun. No cheese or anything. Come on. Gotta have that cheeseburger, right? And then in the Atari 2600 version, it's similar. It's almost like you're starting on stage two. And interesting that when you drop the burgers down, like everything looks kind of the same until they're down in their platforms. And that's when they kind of take the shape or color of what you're making. Bump and Jump, another uh, classic here. Um, it's a driving game that looks like this. And there was a few of them for the time. But the gimmick on this one is if you go fast enough, you can jump. So you got to jump over like the waterways and bridges and whatnot and get the bump the enemies into the sides of the road to make them blow up, hence the name Bump and Jump. Very, very decent port for the Atari 2600. And you can you can certainly tell what's going on. I like the fact that your wheels are kind of wiggling a little bit to give the simulation that the uh, arcade version was giving you. <laughs> like they're gonna fall off the axle or something. Yeah, Bump and Jump for the 2600, not bad. Kind of in the realm of like, what, they made that for the 2600? Well, they did. Well, we have Double Dragon, you know, one of the first, probably more mainstream uh, beat em ups. There have been other beat em ups along the way, but this one was the one that I think kind of took the world by storm for a while there. So you got Double Dragon. And then the 2600, ugh, is pretty rough, to be honest with you. But they made one, and people bought it, apparently. Double Dragon for the 2600, who knew? Ikari Warriors along that same line, too. Kind of top down. War shooter going through, throwing grenades, shooting bad guys. And on the 2600, it's like everything's kind of bigger, but it still kind of gets gets the job done. You can see what's going on. They even have the tanks in this one. Crazy. Good old Xenophobe. I want to like this game. I really do. It's just, it's rough to control. It, there's too many things going on. Um, but cool game. Uh, and in the arcade, much better because you can do three player. They're all going their own ways. You all get your own screen. Um, two screens on the NES version. And then even with the Atari 2600 version, it's not terrible. I mean, you can still tell what things are. You can tell where you're going. It's just, you just move from room to room and kill the bad guys and pick up the items. And, uh, you know, try to blow up the ship and leave on time. All right. Yeah, they made, they made Xenophobe, or Xenophobe, I suppose, uh, for the 2600. Classic black box game for the NES. You just go through the level and kick or punch the bad guys <laughs> before they gang up on you. All right. And similar story for the 2600 version. Just same thing. It's a little bit harder to maneuver because you only have the one button. So your one button's attack and then you have to like, you know, do something to make you jump. So a little harder to control on this one, but it did exist. On the 2600, it's called Kung Fu Masters. So if you're looking for it, it's, it'll be under Kung Fu Masters. Another classic, Rampage. Play the giant monsters, knock down the buildings. Love me some Rampage. A lot of fun on this one. And the 2600 version, which will let you play as Ralph. The NES version didn't, you do, didn't let you do that. Uh, again, like, thanks for trying. Pretty rough. But you can kind of tell what's going on as far as, like, buildings. <laughs> and and where you're punching to uh, make them disintegrate. 
But yeah, there is a, uh, they, they, they do have Rampage for the 2600, believe it or not. Now this one just makes sense because it's Klax, and Klax is made by Atari, so the Tengen version of Klax, um, it's a fun puzzle game. Uh, these tile come down, you can collect a few of them or drop them down and get three in a row, and it'll uh, clear them out, but sometimes you have to get like three in a row like in an X, or three in a row horizontally or vertically, um, and you just have to keep going and going and going. Um, you can even toss your tiles back up the screen or up the ramp uh, if you need some extra time to figure out what you're going to do with that thing. So you can check out Klax for the NES, or even check out Klax for the 2600. And from what I understand, uh, this was one of the last, maybe the last, officially licensed game that came out for the 2600. I think this was maybe PAL territory, is that right? 1990 of all years? Good lord. But yeah, they made, they made a version of Klax for the 2600, and it plays just like Klax. Clax is one of those games you don't need good graphics. You just need to have fun gameplay. I started off with my homie Qbert. I played so much of this in the arcade and on uh, even on the NES and a ton of it on the Atari as well. But this is the NES version of Qbert. It's not bad. I do like the fact that you can actually change your controller setup if you want to hit the diagonals instead of like up, which makes you go like, you know, up left or up right rather. Um, so neat, but I mean, it's Qbert, an, an absolute classic. You may have played Qbert in the arcade, and you may have played an arcade game that used to be Qbert. You can tell because they have this pattern uh, burned into the screen. Have you seen those? <laughs> oh, Qbert's a fun game. It's, it's, it's a classic. And then on the Atari 2600, basically the same game, you know, according to the limitations and everything, but still a super fun game. You just gotta fill in the blocks, fill in the cubes. It played great. I, I had no problems having the arcade version of Qbert, and I had no problem playing this at home as often as I could. There is a slight exploit you can use, which comes in handy, where you can jump into your enemy with that slight twist of time that happens right between when both of you jump into the next block. So you can you can always do that. <laughs> There's my little tip for you. That is Qbert. Spy Hunter, another all-time classic. Got all that Peter Gunn soundtrack. You're just driving along, you're shooting the other cars, you can pick up upgrades as well, and you just, there's no way to beat this game. It's just a high score getter. You just keep going, you just keep going and going, really. But it's cool because I love that you can like, pull into the back of the trucks and get like your weapon upgrade and all that. And many didn't realize that they actually had Spy Hunter on the Atari 2600. It was a later release, um, but it's Spy Hunter, and it's on the Atari 2600. Interesting. It's a lot harder of a game than it should be, but, you know, that's Spy Hunter for you. Well, this is Ghostbusters. This is the NES version, and this is that kind of weird, <laughs> like, you have to go to the parts of the city and then, you know, drive along and then try to capture the ghosts in your trap and all that. And um, not the easiest game to play, especially if you're, like, you know, a big-time Ghostbusters fan. I mean, the Ghostbusters franchise still lives on today. And this is what we had for the NES. You just try to play through it just because it was Ghostbusters. You want to show your loyalty. P pretty rough to play through. And they had this same version on the Atari 2600, which was even harder to play through. <laughs> Trust me on this. Now I'm trying to play it here with one player and, uh, yeah. And the driving is basically pointless. It was like, well, there's a driving mode, so we'll just put that in here. But there's no, there's nothing to pick up or anything. You just, you just look at it for a second. Eh. Now there was a Ghostbusters 2 for the NES, not the good one that the United States of America did not get, but we got this other, this kind of weird one where you just like, you know, go down the rope and then you're in the sewers. Well, there is a Ghostbusters 2 for the Atari 2600 that's just the uh, repelling down type thing, uh, but I'm, even I'm not going to count this. I mean, there are two Ghostbusters 2 games, not the same. That's almost like saying, well, both game systems had golf. Well, yeah, but it's not the same, all right? I mean, it's golf, sure, but it's, you, know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. All right, I just wanted to showcase that, yes, there was a Ghostbusters 2. Gyrus, on the other hand. Oh, this was a fun game, for sure. So Gyrus is like a tunnel shooter, and the cool part was you can go all the way around the screen. So you're not just, you know, at the bottom of the screen or moving left to right. You can move all the way around. And it's a little shooter, a little bit like Tempest, like back in the day. Fun game. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of this game, for sure. And the Atari 2600 version eh, gets the job done. It's it's fine. It even has the music and everything, so I gotta applaud that. Good old Gyrus for the Atari 2600. How fun. Well, we got Commando, and Commando came out on the NES during a time where it was okay to release, like, glitchy, buggy games, but you play them anyway because they're awesome. So, 
<laughs> so my opinions aside, um, Commando's an all-time classic. It, of course it is. It just, you go through and you just you run and shoot and you can save the prisoners. There's these little trap doors, like these little secret areas that you can get into. You know, I, li I like Commando. I like Commando quite a bit, actually. So um, fun to see this on the NES. And then the Atari 2600 version was the thank you for trying version. Uh, you know, just like how the Atari 2600 had Atari Warriors and games like Rampage. I mean, just for a time, sure. I mean, they just had these games released. And if you missed out on those games, those were on my previous video. But yeah, they had Commando in there as well. So here you go. <laughs> now, Othello, well, Othello's a kind of game that you don't need to have good graphics to have fun with it. Just like chess, just like checkers. Othello's fine enough. Uh, there's the black and white players, and then you have to surround your enemy um, either like vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. This is not the game of Go, like you might see like in Japanese shows or anything like that. It looks like the same pieces, plays totally different. Othello is kind of an easy game to pick up, and I suck at it. I have no strategy. I just you know I'm, I'm happy getting one at a time while the computer just you know beats me every time. <laughs> and again, the Atari 2600 version. It's fine. I mean, it plays the same. You just have to put your piece on the other side of the player. And then in doing so, whatever pieces are in the middle that are a different color, they'll be flipped over and they will become yours. So there's Othello for the NES and the 2600. Well, there was a time there where California Games was on a lot of systems, PC and more. So you have California Games. It's a collection of kind of mini games. You have like the Hacky Sack. Uh, there's a skateboarding thing, which is supposed to be completely awesome, but I completely suck at it. There is the BMX style. This isn't bad. And then surfing. And of all games, oddly enough, I kind of enjoyed the surfing maybe the most, but it's probably because I was better at this than some of the other missions. Hacky Sack was kind of fun, though. Um, and I played a ton of this on the Atari 2600 back in the day, because it was one of the games I had for the Atari 2600. And again, you got your hacky sack, all your cool tricks and techniques and maneuvers and all kinds of ways to score up extra points. You got the skateboarding, which admittedly, as of getting this gameplay footage, I don't remember how to play. I used to be really good at it. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a clue of <laughs> how I used to play it. The BMX on the Atari 2600 version was probably my favorite. Um, not doing too well this time around, but I always had a, f a lot of fun with this one. And then again, surfing. And on the Atari 2600, I loved how that water looked. I, I think just look. I think thought it looked awesome. So, yeah. I mean, if you're still collecting for the 2600, California Games might, might be one to pick up. And along with California Games, we have Winter Games. Uh, the NES version here features uh, the hot dog uh, ski jump event where you have to like ski jump and do tricks and techniques. You got your ice skating, even a little tobogganing. Sure, why not? And then there was the Atari 2600 version that wasn't exactly the same because you have your downhill skiing. I'm not doing very good at this. Uh, you do have the toboggan and this one actually plays pretty well. This one's kind of fun. Um, and I love how the screen turns. I thought, I thought that looked great for the 2600. And then you also had the ski jump where you can do tricks and stuff like that. And again, I'm not, not too good at this one. There's no moon gravity for me or no uh, always land like there's in the Tony Hawk game. So got to pass on this one. Had Star Voyager. Star Voyager was one of those games that was kind of just, you know, kind of there on a lot of different systems. Uh, NES was one of them. Uh, this is a true story. I have never learned how to play this game. I have no clue what I'm doing. I mean, I think I do. It's like, I gotta go somewhere and go to the next place, and there's a map you can pull up, and it's like, oh, I wanna go here. But it's not really going there, and the more I go to that direction, the more I'm not, I don't feel like I'm moving. So, I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe one of these days I'll figure it out. But as of right now, I have no clue how to play Star Voyager for the NES. I'll have to look up a tutorial video. Star Voyager on the 2600, however, is a lot easier because it tells you where the ship is. You look at your little radar, you aim in that direction, you find your ship or your ships or whatever that you're shooting at, you kill them, your little uh, wormhole warp zone portal thing pops up, and you go through it in one of the coolest uh, ordeals that you ever saw in your life, and you move on to the next stage. And that's Star Voyager for the Atari 2600. I'm here to tell you. I enjoy Star Voyager for the 2600 a lot more than Star Voyager for the NES. I wish I was making that up, it's totally the truth. And if you allow me to cheat some more like I did on my last list, this is for the Famicom. This is the Japanese NES, this is the Japanese Nintendo system, and we had Space Invaders. Now we never got Space Invaders in the United States of America for the NES. I don't know why. I totally could have seen this as a black box title. 
Um, but we just didn't. But Space Invaders, I mean, that's a game I still like playing today on any platform, and they're still making new versions of it, stuff like that. Every once in a while you might see a new version of Space Invaders, like at the arcade or something like that. No, I just love it. My strategy was always to uh, shoot down the columns so it takes them longer to uh, shift direction and drop down and everything. So, gotta love Space Invaders, and oh my goodness, did I play it for the 2600. I played it all the time for the 2600. I think it, it may have been a pack-in, or at least I think it was a pack-in when we got our 2600. So happy to see Space Invaders, um, and hey, you know what? Plays like Space Invaders, can't go wrong. Galaxian came out in Japan for the Famicom, and um, it's kind of like a Space Invaders, kind of like a Galaga. Put them both together, you got Galaxian, kind of. <laughs> it's its own thing, and I mean, it's Galaxian, and it's always worth popping in 25 cents if you ever see it at your local arcade bar. And then Galaxian for the 2600, it doesn't play as well as the NES version, doesn't play as well as the arcade version. I guess that it got the job done for the time. This is one I didn't have when I was growing up uh, for the 2600, but they have one, and uh, just wanted to showcase it really quick. Puyon is a game that we did get in the arcade, uh, never got it for the NES. Um, would have been fun to have for the NES, too. I wouldn't have minded seeing this as well. I could have seen this as a silver box title, you know, along with, like, Chubby Cherub and all that. Uh, you play as the uh, this little pig here, uh, trying to save your piglets from these wolves who are dropping down on balloons. And you have to shoot down the balloons. Every once in a while you get a meat that you can throw and uh, swipe out a bunch of enemies all at once. If you miss, then the wolves start climbing your tree. And then we'll find a place where they'll start, you know, snapping at you. So you have another obstacle to look out for. Uh, as you're trying to save your piglets here. And this is Puyon. Um, it's just a fun arcade style game. And then again, for the 2600, plays very similarly. You know, this, you got your meat at the top, which looks like just like a, a, like a brick, <laughs> but it gets the job done. Um, you gotta shoot out the walls before they get to you. Cool. What could be the most old school thing you've heard all day is we used to have the game Frontline, the arcade machine at Burger Chef back in the day. So keep that in mind. Uh, the NES version plays okay, or the Famicom version rather plays okay. Now in the arcade, you have your spin dial, kind of like for Arkanoid or for like Tron, um, which is your gun location. So you can walk forward and then spin your gun around and shoot the enemies behind you while walking forward. Can't have that on the NES. And you can't have that on the Atari 2600 either. But you can shoot and you can lob your grenades and whatever, so... You know, all right. <laughs> they made a front line for the 2600. Crazy Climber was just one of those kind of fun, thank you for making something unique games. Um, hard to do on the NES. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, did it come with its own controller for the NES to help you climb? Because this D-pad is not working for this game. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can climb upward with one hand, and that's about all I can do. And this is your Atari 2600 version, which I'm actually able to play a lot easier because I can actually move where I need to go. <laughs> but uh, the gimmick behind it is you have to like, you know, your controllers move up to grab and then push down to pull yourself up. And it's kind of like that idea. So that's, in fact, now that I think about it, Crazy Climber may have been able to play with one and two controllers and then you use both D-pads. Is that how you play the game? It may be. I have to try that one of these times. If you're like, wait a minute, that's kind of deja vu-esque. Well, I did a couple of these videos in the past, and then this one I just combined them all into one video. So if you missed the other ones that we did like several years ago, it's just an all-at-once kind of thing. Thing. Thingy. Something. Anyway, watch that video. I'm gonna stop talking. Uh, I'm gonna stop talking right now.